skin so weavy Sweat like bullets from a gun Hi, everybody. I'm Ian McCarter. Hi, and I'm Dom Walsh. And uh, we'd just like to share a little bit about the song that you just heard called Shadow of the Pine. Um, it's a unique genre of songs, you could say. It's, uh, it's something I started doing a number of years ago called Legacy Songwriting. And it was where um, I met with someone who was nearing the end of their life, and they shared a bit of their story. And from that became something alive and new in the form of a song to go on and, and inspire people as they, as they wished, as they were saying goodbye. And so I had Dan in his good graces play his wonderful banjo on it. And that was really fun. And uh, oh, absolute pleasure. I can promise you that. It was, uh, yeah, it was great. It's a great song as well. Thank you. Yeah, it's a special one. And yeah, the family just really appreciates what you did for it. And it just, that banjo just adds such a nice home quality to it, you know, a warmth that... Uh, yeah, it was it was great. And uh, may I say as well, probably one of the best whistling solos I've ever heard in my life as well. <laughs> well, I do what I can. <laughs> what the birds <laughs> gave me. Yeah, no, it was, it, it was great. And I, I was, I was sort of very um, interested because for the benefit of those watching Ian, Ian and I met when I was out in uh, California touring uh, a while ago you know when we could do that and um, we uh, we also um, sort of got together for a uh, an Instagram interview recently and um, I, w I was aware that you uh, were doing these sort of uh, legacy songs but it relates quite strongly to, to some of what I do because I've um, for a long time now played music in care homes and big interest in playing for people with um, you know, suffering from dementia, especially, and um, and sort of that's been an important part of my work in recent, well, I say in recent years, I suppose for about a decade. Um, so I sort of was very, I was very interested in this kind of new genre you'd uh, you'd created because um, it struck me as a very, very worthwhile thing indeed to do, and just sort of yeah, just remind you how powerful music can be, I guess, to, to you know encapsulate so many so many things that. It's hard to hard to just say in words. It's true. Yeah, I like that because the emotions of the song allow that story to come through where just 
reams of information can't really describe, you know, like there's a life yeah. legacy that, you know, someone could just share their entire life story, but the song just focuses on one solid aspect that is, it's more emotional and it can, you know, hopefully the intention is to inspire the rest of us, you know, with the yeah, message behind so, it. So. Yeah, I think so. I think it, I was always interested sort of, um, this in watching people sort of remember who they were and remember their characters particularly those suffering from dementia but even those not to be honest just just you know it, it did more than just stir memories as in who i know that one uh but it, it stir memories as in you know remember their the experiences they had you know with maybe with the song or, or with with that type of music um and it was like watching people kind of come to life in a way and remember who they who they are and where they came from and um I always found that really fascinating to to watch, even as an observer, let alone a <laughs> let alone a performer. Um, so to sort of, the, as I say, I was very interested in your your style of writing these songs because I suppose those stories that I watched kind of come back to them. You know, I guess your 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 role has been more to put it put that story into song, which is a you know is a really lovely lovely thing as well. It has been, and I I was really inspired by that same theme that you do, where that song kind of like livens someone up again and reminds them of who they really are, yeah. beyond all yeah. the shadow and the you know or whatever the dementia, the Alzheimer's yeah. would do. You know, it just it's like this yeah. cave of the mind, and to see people crack out of it, I think is as a viewer so powerful because it's so symbolic. You know, it's yeah. like that Absolutely. kind of darkness or haze or distraction or depression or or anything can distract us all in our normal lives to some degree and to see somebody completely transcend that and it's most yeah. intense form just kind of calls us all to to remember that potential within each of us yeah um, i think that's i think that's very well put yeah i think that's absolutely right yeah um, I just i was so gripped by it i saw what was that documentary that was done? Um, there was one where this guy went around and uh, went to different people who suffered from this kind of... Oh, yes. I, I think, yes. I think I know the one you mean. Yeah. 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 I, I saw that and I'm like, wow. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's something that a lot of, you know, coming from a medical background, it's like, I haven't seen yeah. drugs do that in yeah. a medical sense. <laughs> To the way yeah. that it was described in the documentary, but sure, sure, yeah. And what's so, the songwriting? Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was I was only going to say with, with this song in particular, it, it, you know, to explain a bit more about the full story of this particular song, um, you know, right. in terms of who it's about. Yeah. So the song, in its poetic form, is about a pine tree that was once the shade of the village and all gathered around it, and. Um, then suddenly a storm took it down and everybody was yeah. shocked and they look at this fallen giant as a shadow of what it once was and then in the end when the winter comes they take the wood from the tree to burn and to gather and to essentially be grateful for what that pine has left behind even though it's gone as mm. we once knew it it still exists and proves a very powerful purpose as it stands yeah as you oh wow right, nice. and so yeah. the analogy is of this man that i met with when i was working as a nurse last year mm. and he was a really young guy he was in his early 40s and he you know i was for background i was a hospice nurse then and i was admitting this fellow and and then i just was so amazed at how relaxed and good humored he was even though he had this awful internal cancer just wrecking him yeah. and it was only going to be weeks until he was gone we all knew it and i just asked i asked him why he was this way and where i've seen many just crumble under the pressure of death which is very understandable <laughs> this Absolutely. guy this guy wasn't in denial yet he was calm mm. and I was really curious and so he told me that this was his final gift to those around him and those that came to him before and like relied on him before were watching him now and how this example was his final offering to to 
the homage to love over fear. And mm -hmm. he said, I know I could crumble and focus on myself in this time. And, you know, I'm tempted to sometimes because I'm going to die. But he said, I can still show love. And given the context of my end, that love becomes that much more precious and powerful. And this is what people are going to remember after I'm gone. And they can remember that this is a possibility within themselves when they too get to that point and they yeah. too face their own death. They can remember me and see how it could be better. And mm. I was just so moved by that. It's just, yeah. that is total courage and transcendence through responsibility. I mean, he felt like he was still a guide to the very end. And truly that's what everyone is until the very, very end. Amazing for someone to be able to see it in that perspective, isn't it? Yeah. I know, I know. And yeah. so I take him and his story. And when I sit with people through these songs, you know, that might be struggling or hopefully on their way to that perspective. That's kind of my hope is that everybody would yeah. be able to take a piece of that and to be like, I do have meaning. I do have wisdom. And mm -hmm. I do have an example of facing the most daunting foe of mankind, you know, oblivion. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and what can one do with that? And it looks different for everybody. And so Absolutely. to help people find their own way of how to stand and to still be able to give in those times has been the mission of these songs. And mm. thankfully with everybody, they've shared some beautiful nugget that then was mm. turned into the song. And then many people, you know, if in the best yeah. of timings have been able to hear it before they go, and then they can rest knowing that this song yeah. represents something true within them that they were able to transcend and express and encapsulate yeah forever in the form of music it's an immensely special thing to uh to do for someone to give them give them that gift yeah i think um, yeah yeah it's it is it's it's a remarkable uh remarkable thing and um i think uh i remember actually one of my very best friends um died a couple of years ago but she was uh, she was in her mid-60s and um i've known her since i was a teenager because she was involved in the sort of music scene in stafford and she sort of uh became something of a second mum slash big sister slash favorite aunt mm -hmm. uh, all in one. and I think uh, the last time I saw her and I knew this was it because she, she had cancer so I knew this was the last time which is the only time I've ever experienced that funnily enough I've, I've, I've seen people when I've known they've not got long but this was the one time I've ever known where it was definitely you know this is goodbye wow. um, and um, almost almost the last thing she <laughs> said was um these friendships between the, the generations are, are so important that, that i know just i've never forgotten that sentence it just wow. it just sort of even in the last time of seeing it like, what a fantastic thing to say <laughs> like, what tell a, me about it wow brilliant motto just to throw in there right at the very very end of her life um and uh, and it's so true so true you know yeah. i think it's it, I can't speak for America, but certainly over here, I, I feel like that divide has got more and more um, between between young and not even old, just you know, different generations, um, and um, and that strikes me as a very sad thing. So I, th you know, I, I always remember those words as a as a very profound sort of yeah, very profound motto to take forward. Absolutely, and I think we're missing out. You know, I think both sides are missing out, but I think especially the youth, because we're missing out on wisdom of experience yeah. long before our little technological lifespan and yeah. very practical wisdom about just how it is to live. And it's so easy to get thrown up and just tossed around with the desires that technologically focused existence. Yeah brings to the table it's like yeah absolutely yeah. grasping constant grasping and so yeah i think with our current times of covid too where it's that that separations become more definite mm -hmm. um i think there's a lot of healing to be done in the, t in the oh, times yes. to come i think we got a lot of lost ground to gain again <laughs> yeah <absolutely. laughs> so i'm hopeful i think the songs can kind of be nice beacons you know music yeah. welcomes people that's what i love about it 
it's not a, yeah. a lecture or a scolding, but instead the songs, <laughs> these songs in particular, are just like, this is what can come from that friendship. Yeah. You know, like yeah, your friend I, I mentioned. Yeah. And, and I'd say my, my capacity has been slightly different in that I've, I've not written necessarily, you know, tons and tons of songs about, you know, particular people who have passed. But, you know, I mean, I, I did I did write one about um, one of the guys in care home who had dementia, who was a former singer. Uh, and I think I performed it for you when we did the Instagram thing. And he, um, you know, we, we kind of accidentally rekindled his sort of singing uh, not career, but you know what I mean. Sort of is, is you know, got him enthusiasm. Back into music, yeah, into, yeah, into his music, and that was amazing to do right before he died. And I wrote the song to partly sort of tell his story, and even you know, on a less kind of uh, personal level, I, I wrote a song called "The Hermit of Gully Lake," which was about this guy in Canada who's a bit of a cult hero who uh, basically was a, a deserted from the war because he was a pacifist and. Um, lived in a tiny hut in the middle of the wilderness for 60 years uh, wow. and this was relatively recent i mean i just can't remember when he died exactly but we're talking this century so we're not you know um and he uh and i wrote a song about him because i thought i heard that story and thought blimey if you can't write a song about that you can't write a song about anything um, <laughs> and, um, and even though i'd never met the man and i didn't know him and all the rest of it i still kind of like telling his story you know i still like sort of going on stage and telling his uh telling his story even though i even though i didn't even know him you know uh, i think there is something nice about being embodied in song i think that's a really uh, positive thing e even if you know as i say even if you've not necessarily been involved yeah they become a little legend you know it's something that exactly everyone yeah. can enjoy and relate to as a symbol instead of like mm. having to know that person personally people who hear shadow of the pine you know it's yeah. like a little miniature legend and it is yeah it's something it's that goes on yeah. and it stands for something symbolic within us all like the hermit you know like someone who's yeah. just like all right if if you're not down with what i am all about then <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> see you later <laughs> yeah exactly Staying, sticking to your guns i love that yeah but it was uh oh it was it was a real pleasure Ian. and um you know i think uh as I say, we, we met, I remember, in California, and uh, I seem to remember didn't actually get to play music. I think we just wandered around, a, we wandered around a banjo factory and a, and a, a wildlife park, if I remember rightly. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> um, right. uh, it's pretty mellow, but, yeah. Yeah, but now that we're thousands of miles away in the middle of a global pandemic, we finally got around to it. You know, it only, it works that way sometimes. <laughs> and I think, surprisingly, yeah. that's a common story these days. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, but seriously, it was a real, uh, real pleasure, and um, and I love the song. It was great to great to play on it. Well, the pleasure was mine, and you made <laughs> it very special. So thank you, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>